under the east wall. And we come up at midtown. So right now you're still on the edge of Queens. Get into the bag at night, and if they don't like what's in this bag, they go to any other bag. A lot of times, won't even see the burrow. Many times you do, because once they burrow, you know, the Norways, once they burrow below, they kill the root system. And then you see dieback. Like over there, you might be able to you know, pick up a burrow. Tree pits and tree square. You know, and um, they're very, you know, it, it helps beautify the city, of course. But once you put available space, earthen space, together with these bags, but you're in Midtown right now. Um, you know we're not far from the theater district. All the people, anyone that comes out of an apartment here, they're doing pretty well. There's Empire State Building, of course. Even, even like this, David, um, when I first came, I said, well, one of the things you have to do is get all the little baskets of New York City changed so that they're rodent resistant, right? You would think the city would be able, well, we don't want any racks, so let's make that general shift. We'll shift over to a whole different litter basket. Hmm. No. It's mammoth undertaking. They'd be like, we can't do that. The answer is no. And, and you can say, well, can we work on it? Can we think about it? The answer is no, right? Because they, you know, they'll say, it has to go all the way through the chain. They'd say, well, the, uh, the baskets we picked, you know, we, we have a certain budget for those baskets. The union approved of those baskets for being lifted. Something that you could do in a small town quickly in a city as big as New York takes mammoth years of committee work and. And, and if it's really important, it can get high priority, but you know, the rats, are, they're in their burrows below saying, this is great. They can't even change their litter bag. This is the famous um, Park Avenue. Straight that way is Grand Central Terminal. I wish I'm not gonna cross, but, but a lot of people wonder, you know, here you have this beautiful median with all these plants, you don't say, well, can the rats get in there? They actually don't, because to get the food, you know, they have to cross over the streets. And that's, they do it, but it's not. Now look this way, if you cross over. See Grand Central Terminal? Right there, okay. And most of these people here, just like us, you know, you'll see them, we're gonna drop down on the subway. And we're gonna take the subway down to um, where I work, and that's called Tribeca, or Civic Center. So one, of the, one of the biggest projects I work with is this. So, rats in the subway. One of, one of my top three. ecologically uh, where the rat populations are if there's say a big infestation down here which there is 
I want to know all the ecological factors and urban factors as to why the rats are there. So my job is to figure that out. You know, what, what's all the factors above and beyond? Um, you know, just this rats around the park, you know, is, is there something like a, is there a steam street? Is there a lot of food? Is it the perfect soil? Is it infested? Notice, uh, since we're walking, see that right there, that patch? That tells a story. Below that is the sewer line leading into the building. The sewer line broke over the years. They got to go in, dig up the street, patch the seam where it is. The rats get into the seam and they get into the building. Whenever you see that, that tells you a sewer line broke. How do I got going? Okay, so, so talk about those transformers. All right, so part of the interesting thing in New York City, David, is when you walk the streets in New York City, you have to read the streets, like almost like you read a stream. If you're a fisherman, fisherman you know how where the fish are. And well, New York City, there's a lot to read, right? It's catch basins, different kind of catch basin, alleyways. There's a lot of grates in the sidewalk, like this. And when you ask the average person, like we asked you, what are you, what are you walking on? Most people don't know. Some of them will say, I think it leads to the subway, but it doesn't. It's electrical transformers. And the reason you always know is this pattern of consolidated uh, metal gives it a lot of weight, so you can't lift these easily, because you really don't want to lift them easily. But over here, for example, is the hatch and these are usually very, very heavy, um, and they require a big pole, and, and you pull it back, because obviously they don't want homeless going down there and sleeping in electrical con uh, transforms. But because they're warm, the rats go down, you know, they squeeze between all these openings, like right here. Many times, it, wherever there's a sufficient opening, and they run down the wall, and they hide either on top of or below the transformer. And then they're warm. And then they come up and they forge on the bags that are put out at night. And um, that's it. And again, most people, I think there may be some others, but the subway, subways also have their own grates, but have a different shape. And they're there for ventilation and for fire escape, should they need them. But most people walk the streets have no idea of which is which. So it's about reading the stream. But I get calls all the time. People say, the rats are coming out of the subway grates. And I always know they really mean them. But they don't know that, you know. And that's the, what the original streets look like? Yes. These are the original cobblestone of New York right here. Right? And this goes way back, 1800s. And then they put the asphalt over it to make it smooth because everyone, you know, that is too. This is, we call these catch basins, right? And in New York, everything's cement, so there's nothing to absorb the rain, right? So in New York, we have to have lots of catch basins. And what New York does that's unique is they combine the rain system with the sewer system. It's called the combined sewer system, meaning fresh water goes into the same sewer system as the waste of all the toilets in these buildings. The catch basin catches it here, channels it out to the middle of the street. There's the, there's the manhole cover. And below, out of the street is the main sewer line that runs below all streets. And there's also utilities here. Con Edison. So right below here, we have all the electrical systems also running below the street, but at a different depth. 
So when Con Ed comes, notice you can't open that manhole unless you have a special manhole um, tool. Over here, all you would need there is a big pick manhole pick, and you can pull that up. But where are you going to go? You're going to go to the sewer, which is, you know, down below is who's going to go in the sewer? You know, nobody. But there, yeah, they'd worry about all kinds of issues. Way what? Well, you know, some of the theories you were talking to Bill Jackson about, is, is this sort of coming into play here? Mm -hmm. It is. Can you sort of go over that? Yeah. So, you know, Bill, you know, Bill's major thrust for years, but Bill built on Davis, Dave Davis, who was the, probably one of the first in city rodent problems. But Bill Jackson built on um, saying, you know, it's about maintaining your city, right? So the, the rats are like a barometer reading of our human behavior in cities. Very accurate, right? Or any way, any other analogy you want to use. You go to the doctor, they take your pulse, and you're overweight and you have high, high blood pressure. It's like, well, guess what? You're not treating your body correctly. You've got to change what you eat get more exercise, right, so forth and so on. Exactly the same. So Bill Jackson, you know, his major thrust was you won't have these rat problems that you need all this poison and trap station stuff if you manage your own nest correctly. So, so clean up, you know, um, take care of monitoring, you know, all the basic elements of um, healthy environments, healthy body or a healthy environment or healthy whatever. So that's that's the guiding principle. So we we work on the same principles Jackson worked on in his career of like, you know, you have to clean up. The problem though, right, and Jackson never worked in New York City, right, um, uh, nor did Colvin, right, they worked in Boston and they worked in uh, Washington DC, this kind of thing. And as I mentioned earlier, New York is a whole different ballgame. The principles are the same, but the reality is different. So, like I said, you can say it in New York City, you have to deny the rats food. So you have to clean up. Again, how do you enforce um, clean up when you have upwards of 12 million people in 320 square miles, of which our species, right, you know, human beings, <clears throat> no matter what you do, a small percentage of those humans are going to litter. So let's say in Dallas, a small percent, let's just say, because it ranges from what I've read, 15 to 25 percent of every human population litters. And you can't change that. You can't, they get up in the morning and they're either preoccupied obsessively with all kinds of things, and they're not going to stop littering that day. They're going to litter because it's in their either their nature or there's ten other reasons. They're mad at the world, or they believe their taxes aren't being so they want someone to clean up after them. Well, if you're in Dallas, a couple million people, and 15% of a couple million scattered over a wide area, you don't notice the litter. You come to New York City, you have upwards of 12 to 14 million in a very tight area. The same 10 to 15% you're going to notice the litter everywhere. And the rats say, well, look at all the litter. I can come out of my burrow and there's a pretty good chance if I forge in a, any different direction, I'm going to encounter something, a piece of bagel, pizza, pizza, half a candy bar, half-eaten apple, so forth and so on. So you can put up all the signs which they do and say, please don't litter. Keep the streets clean. Littering is bad behavior. Whether it be Dallas or Plano or here, David, or Hong Kong, or you go anywhere, human behavior is human behavior. And even though it's ideal, it's almost like saying, which we do say, don't speed. There'll always be speeders. Don't murder. There'll always be murderers. You know, don't thievery. There'll always, so forth and so on. There'll always be litterers. So that's what's unique about New York is people say, well, what do you in New York expect? They have rats because they, they have trash. That's right. We have trash because we have a lot of people in a very small area. Same as you do in your own city, but you don't have our density. You know? So 
Well, that's what I mean. People say, oh, they deserve their rats and they should clean up and, you know, IPM, as much as we teach it, you and I, you come to New York City and you say, you know, IPM starts with sanitation. All right, change your litter baskets. Union says, nope, we ain't changing the litter baskets. What are you going to do with your IPM? You're not going to do anything with your IPM. You know, or, or IPM means clean up first, sanitation is pest control. Don't use the bags outside the restaurants. How are we going to pick up all that trash by morning? You're not going to. So IPM, to some degree, does not work in all cases. Even though, in principle, it sounds like it should this be able This is health, right? So these are the ultimate servants of the city. Notice the architecture where the, the servants, they put their head down, they bear the weight without saying anything. They're not expected to. They fold their arms, and they just carry the weight. And that's the message. Like, you serve. You serve the people. And you carry the weight of serving the people. You're just, that's what you are, a servant. And that's for the people that work in the building. Right, you're a city servant, and that's what it's supposed to be. 